This, this is the ABQ Business Podcast with your host, Jason Rigby. Each week, we'll interview visionary business leaders to inspire the creative power and spirit that's in every entrepreneur. Discussing strengths, weaknesses, strategies, systems, and the problems we can all solve together for a new future for local small business. Guys, I'm going to talk about being patient. You're like, what the hell? There's not a time for that, Jason, right now. I've got a business to run. I've got so many issues going on right now. I'm pivoting in my business. I'm running around and I'm doing as much as I can. I sometimes don't even know where the hell I'm going. I, I, I'm stuck in some areas. I'm dealing with this stupid pandemic. We're having to wear masks and clean and over and over and over again. And we're five months into this, six months into this. And, and you want to talk about patience, Jason? Exactly. Because as a leader in a time of crisis, patience can amplify your output and it can amplify the output of your team. So I uh, follow Harbor Business Review and a guy by the name of David Sluss wrote an article um, and he entitled it Becoming a More Patient Leader. And I'll put the links in the show note if you guys want to read this. But he talked about how you lead effectively and especially during a crisis. And he said that like the super pill that you can take, the thing that's going to cure a lot of the L's that's going on is patience. And he explains it in detail. And I'm going to get into that with you guys, because I, I, I want to make sure that in this face of frustration, in this adversity, in this crisis, that we understand and are self-aware enough that we have the ability to keep other people calm. That's what being a leader is. It's having that ability to bring stability into your team or into someone's life. So whenever you walk into a room and they're giving you reports and you can see the strain in their face, you can see them you know, struggling because they're tired, you can support them. With patience, you can support them. Without patience, you get irritated and snap off and say something silly. And that is not what they need in this moment. In this article, he talks about there are solutions to new challenges and how you put patience into practice. He goes into how do you find patience inside of you? And what are some of the ways and strategies that you can take right now that will help you amplify your business, your team, your family, whoever it may be that you're in close contact constantly that needs this patience right now. And one of the things that, that he talks about in this new world that we're in is that this technology savvy digital work world, everything is hyperspeed. Like, go, 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 go. How fast can we do this? You know, let's, let's, let's push, push, push. And it was interesting. He decided to do a survey of 578 full-time U.S. working professionals uh, from a wide range of industries. And he did it during now, during COVID-19 lockdown. The average age was 39 years old. And most were college graduates. And half of them were in managerial roles. So he asked the question, how is your immediate supervisor leadership behavior? How is their level of patience? And then he had them also get this. This is really interesting. He had them self-report on their own levels of creativity, productivity, and collaborations. So first part of the test was how is your leader, your immediate supervisor, how are they behaving one and what is their level of patience? Then second part of the test is how is your level of creativity, productivity, and collaborations? And what he realized is their response showed patience in the leader, created this powerful effect. And that productivity, collaboration, and creativity, those that self-reported that, with, when they said that their leader was patient, they were ahead 16% from others. Their productivity was up 13%. How would you like your team right now, the people that are under you, your influence, 
your business, how would you like to have a 16% boost right now? <laughs> Be patient. Be patient, guys. This is something that I think a lot of us don't realize. We think of leadership as being external. When it's actually you being the best version of yourself internally and working inside of you and then you displaying that and coaching, teaching and learning to others. That's what a leader is. I always love Star Trek, especially the old ones. You know, Captain Kirk. He was a leader of leaders. He was the one that went out on the new planet. He took the team with him. Yes, he was cautious. Yes, he was calculated. But he led the way. He didn't ask anyone to do something that he wasn't willing to do. And some of you put so much pressure on those that are around you and those that you lead that you wouldn't even want to work for yourself. If you would put yourself in their shoes and say, would I work for me or am I just a big asshole and I'm manipulative and I'm irritated and I'm push, 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 how would you feel if that was demonstrated to you? Because most of you are running on fumes because physically you're not taking care of yourself. Mentally, you have no idea where you're at. You feel like you're almost going crazy. Spiritually, what's that? I haven't opened up a spiritual book or did meditation or yoga or whatever it is that you're spiritual, read the Bible, prayed, whatever it may be. I haven't done that and I don't know how long. So you're literally at a one or a two in some of these areas in your life and then you're supposed to be leading? Really? You're just as fucked up as the people that you're trying to lead. You have got to set the example. You have got to take that initiative and say, it is my responsibility. These are people that their life is dependent on me. These are people that I make sure they get a paycheck every single week. And when I'm at my best, they're going to flourish. Not only am I going to set the example of what a leader should be, but number two, when I push and when I do need something from them, they know that I'm doing that just as much as they are. And then I'm willing to go the extra mile because every single day I have discipline in my life. I don't eat those cheeseburgers with them. I don't do the things that they do because I'm a leader. And as a leader, and as a leader, I set the example. I raise the bar and I jump over the bar. In fact, I can be the best one that goes over the bar. Some of you have been lazy. That's what it is, guys. It's you being lazy. And I don't want you to use patience as an excuse to not be hard. Because hardness comes from internally. It comes from inside of yourself. It comes from you being truthful with yourself and saying, I'm a fucking fat slob and I need to get up and start walking. And then after I walk and I lose some weight and I watch what I eat and I stop taking fucking shortcuts in everything that I'm doing in my life and I start being honest with myself. How can you be honest with your employees if you can't even be honest with yourself? It's time, guys. It's time for us to be honest. And I'm saying this just as much for me as I'm saying it for you. Especially here lately with COVID, I have been going over things in my life that I need to work on and saying, what am I being fake in and how am I tricking myself in being dishonest? Because I want to lead a life full of integrity and I want that to blend out there. I want that to filter and, and flow clean and clear to those that I lead. I want them to look at me and say, someday I hope I can be like that. Someday I want to do that. And then I want to take them in and coach them and say, you can be that way. It's easy. Here's what I do every day. Here's some of the things that I'm struggling with. And here's what I'm working on. Because you know what? It's a growth mindset. We're going to work. We're going to be disciplined. And we're going to do it day in and day out. And we're going to love life. And we're going to grow our families. We're going to be the examples to our children, to our partners, to our wives, to our husbands, whoever it may be. And then, and only then, can we be an authentic leader? Okay, enough of my tangent, guys. I'm going to go back to patience. 
let's be patient. No, this is super serious. This is something, you know, like personally inside, I, I have a tendency to get irritated when I'm busy with something and look at somebody as an interruption. And that's something I've been working on these past few months is to take the time to be patient enough to listen. Because every moment you interact with someone, it's a coaching opportunity. You have two things to do when you interact with somebody. One, you get to have an opportunity to share the vision. And you should be constantly sharing the vision with everyone. What is the vision that you have for your business? It needs to be ultra clear. You should be able to walk to any employee in your business and ask what the vision is. And they should be able to tell you and articulate it in their own way, but they should be able to know it. And that's you repeating it over and over and over again. And then number two, you have an opportunity to coach by listening to them and then asking them how they, how would you, you know, handle this problem? How, how, how would you fix this? So I'm going to get involved and I'm going to help you, but let's see if you can solve it first before I get it involved. Because I believe in you and I know that you've seen me do this enough and you can understand exactly what the customer needs and you have that relationship with them. So let's have you see if you can solve it. If you can't, I'm right here and I'm able to help you. But I feel from here on out, you can solve these problems. You don't need to come to me every single time when there's a problem because I believe enough in you and trust you enough that you can handle it. Patience, guys. He talks about with academic research, traditionally, there's two types of behaviors that are in a leader. One is task-oriented and one is relationship-oriented. Um, he talks about the best leaders, they strike a balance between the task-oriented and the relationship-oriented. Um, task-oriented behavior is futurist. He likes to use the word futurist, and it's the most effective relationship-oriented behavior as a facilitator. So it goes, you have the futurists and you have the facilitators. And if you can balance that, the futurist is the one that's creating the metrics that need to be accomplished, the vision, that powerful vision that you can display to others constantly. And then the facilitator is the one that's fostering collaboration, empowering the team, finding solutions together. And then he, he wanted to say, okay, this task oriented relationship boarding, when we put patience into it, what begins to happen in a business and in a team? And what they discovered through um, this survey, you know, it's Harvard Business Review, what they discovered was that patience made both approaches significantly more effective. It increased collaboration and creativity, it increased the futurist behavior. It increased the facilitator behavior and the ability of patients to amplify the two approaches was 10 to 11 X. Think about that, how much you can amplify guys just by adding patience to your self-awareness. They may not be able to get it right. They may have doubts on your vision. And that's where patience comes in. So he asked the question, how can leaders boost their patience? How can you boost your patience? Here we go. If you want to build your patience, you need to recognize when it might be tested the most. Guys, this is self-awareness. I talk about this all the time. You've got to be able to recognize it within that. Just that, that quick second. Uh, oh, I'm getting irritated. Oh, I'm getting impatient. If you know that a challenge is coming and you can be mindful of it and stay calm, then that reframes the whole scenario that's around you. You've just created, and I'm using that word created, this very important, powerful word, create. You've just created a atmosphere that allows openness. So as we begin to look at patients as we began to see with this crazy technology that we have nowadays in this hyper speed. And he talks about how the Navy SEALs and we know, you know, how they operate and we know they're an example of, of, of team and leadership. 
I mean, if you don't, um, if you're interested in any of that, I encourage you, Jocko Willink. I talk about him all the time. He has the Dichotomy of Leadership, some great books. Um, he has, I think, four out now on leadership. Uh, amazing books. There's a lot of Navy SEAL books that are out there, uh, you know, on leadership, on teamwork. Uh, just, just amazing. But they have this quote, slow is smooth and smooth is fast. Let me say that again. I want you guys to, to, to think about this. Pause. I'm, I'm going to say this. I want you to pause for 10 seconds. And I want you to say this over and over again, at least five or six times before you get back to the podcast. And I want you to think about it as you're saying it five or six times. Here, here we go. Slow is smooth and smooth is fast. Okay, you're back. Hopefully you said that five or six times. The rapid response special forces teams are methodical and they have to be patient. If they're impatient, people die. If they're impatient, the whole mission, how much planning do you think goes into it? Way more than what the actual mission takes. The amount of time that the mission takes, there was 10 times more planning. Executing it, yes, is time critical, but the execution is because of all the planning the flawless execution is because of everything that went on before that and how methodical they are. Slow is smooth and smooth is fast. These guys have operated over 60 years in crisis situations. They know that working at a slow and smooth pace reduces mistakes and reduces, in the end, what happens? It, it, in the end, it actually speeds up the mission. So what he talks about here, and this is very, um, he says that they have learned that leaders shouldn't confuse operational speed moving quickly with strategic speed, reducing the time it takes to deliver value. <laughs> oh, this is so good. This is the whole thing of the podcast right here, guys. This right here is gold. If you get this part, mm, you're on your way. So do not confuse operational speed moving quickly with strategic speed reducing the time it takes to deliver value. So how do you deliver value? How do you reduce the time it takes to deliver value? You need to clarify and define what delivering value means. You have to go over it just as they go over every single detail of the mission. And every single guy knows where every other guy is and specific what each of their missions are and what the mission is overall and what the mission is together and what the outcome should be. They, they, they reverse engineer everything and go through the whole process front and backwards. They, they relive it and they go over and they talk to each other and they have maps and, com and computer simulations. The list goes on and on. Why? Because they, they have to be ultra clear. They have to be. <laughs> How clear is your team? How clear is your team? Think about that. And then last, and I want to end in this, and he talks about this, and this is an, another powerful moment for us right now. And, and I, I kind of want to be a little bit more um, somber in this because I think we tend to lack this, especially in the United States. And it's something that's so powerful, but yet we don't practice. And he says, thank your way to patience. Gratitude has a powerful effect on a wide range of our attitudes and behaviors. Gratitude creates patience, guys. If you can stop in that moment and just be like, I'm so thankful. You know, my family could be sick now. Something could be terribly happening right now. I could be in the hospital right now. But I have the opportunity in these people's lives and their livelihood is on me as a leader. And it's so humbling. And I'm so grateful that I have the responsibility to mold these people, to guide these people, to see them grow. There's something amazing as a leader when you see someone grow. When you see them begin to do things that they thought that they could never do. When you begin to see them go up that Maslow hierarchy and you know maybe they didn't have very much when they first started working for you. And then you see them you know, begin to progress and move and maybe they buy a car or buy a house and, and you're a part of that. Then they, their kids may, you know, their kids are able to go to school and, and or private school or whatever it may be. And then it's just like, I, I'm a part of that. 
are, are little things. You see Uber Eats come there and, and you're like, yeah, they work for me and they're eating lunch here and they're able to afford Uber Eats, even though it's extremely expensive on the delivery and all that other stuff, whatever. You could get irritated about it or you can say, as a leader, I provided that because I gave them an opportunity to work. They're being successful in their work and I'm thankful for each and every one of them. And if they take pleasure in ordering Uber Eats and wasting their money, then so be it. It's not my responsibility to judge. If you increase your generosity, it will decrease your stress. It will spill over to your whole team. When you demonstrate patience and you have the opportunity to be grateful, when instead of you have that moment, instead of getting irritated and spouting off at somebody, you calm yourself down. You say, I'm going to be patient right now. In fact, I'm going to be grateful. Here we go. Jim, I, I appreciate the problem that you're giving me right now. I think you have the ability. I trust you. You've been with this company a long time. I think you have the ability to solve this problem. I don't think I even need to get involved because I know you can handle it. And if you have any questions and how to handle it, I'd be more than happy to help you with that. But I'm going to task you to handle this. Because Jim, I know one thing. Here's, here, here's how you'd be grateful. Jim, I know one thing. You've worked for me for 11 years. And I, I feel like I don't tell you how much I love you, how much I appreciate you. And we see each other. I see you more than I see my wife or my husband or partner. I, I see you more. We're here all the time. And I'm just, I, I'm just so thankful. You've been honest. You've been caring towards the company. You always put the company first. You, you've, you've done this and then list some things they've done. You've done this, this, and this. And I just want to tell you I'm thankful for that. But this problem that you're bringing to me now, Jim, I know. I've watched you for 11 years. I know you can handle it. Is, how would that make Jim feel compared to Give me the number. I'll, I'll call a customer. Oh, I, I, oh. It's those opportunities, guys, to change people's lives in those moments. And patience can do that. Patience leads that moment to go down two paths. That nasty, ugly, tyrant path are the path of patience that leads to coaching, that leads to gratitude. Effective leadership in times of crisis is enhanced by showing patience. Engage patiently with your team. Increase creativity, productivity, and collaboration. And you, I guarantee you, will see the benefits. Thank you for joining us on the Albuquerque Business Podcast. And thanks, and thanks to our sponsor, RigbyDigital.com. Make sure to subscribe and share and go to ABQPodcast.com. Get show notes, resources, and links to everything we talked about today to help you navigate your journey as an entrepreneur and business owner.